Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central and it's my first news video on my new channel. So let's talk about what broke last week and probably the biggest piece of news is that Slash sat down with Eddie Trunk and gave a 30 minute long interview or so. So if you guys want to listen to the entire interview, I've linked to it down below. But because I'm GNR Central, I transcribed pretty much the whole thing and summarized all of it. So the big news is that he was asked by Eddie Trunk about his Guns N' Roses going to get back together and start writing new music and he said that it's something that they've talked about and he thinks everybody wants to do it but he just said we'll have to wait and see what happens what we'll wait and see what happens and we've been busy running around the planet let's talk about some of the other stuff he revealed as well so slash said he still goes to the rainbow from time to time or whenever guns and roses plays the forum they normally get pizzas delivered to the venue from the rainbow so the interview took place at the rainbow uh, eddie trunk starting like i guess a new interview show uh, on the road, I guess. And then he also said that uh, Slash, Slash said he started going to the Rainbow as a teenager. He said he had a fake ID back then. One night at the Rainbow on Ladies Night, Slash dressed up as a chick and snuck in. I think he had that story in his uh, in his book. He said he was going to try to go get picked up by Steven Adler. He also said that he's been sober for 12 years and he really isn't struggling with it. Slash also revealed that originally Guns N' Roses, when they reunited, weren't planning on a huge tour when him and Axel got back together. He said originally the plan was to do Coachella and a few war warm-up shows including Mexico and Vegas and then it kind of snowballed from there. He said he also revealed that Guns N' Roses has been asked to do Coachella for several years prior to 2016 and he said those early gigs went so well that they did a whole tour across the United States and Canada and everything kind of snowballed from that point. Slash also said that um, if him and Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators will be doing an exclusive concert for Sirius XM subscribers on September 11, 2018 at the Whiskey A Go Go. You guys can actually enter to win uh, a trip there as well as get tickets. They'll also be doing a public show on September 13th, and they may be doing another public show on September 12th. Uh, if you guys saw Todd Kern's Instagram post. And uh, Living the Dream will be out on September 21st, 2018. That's Slash's new record. And then... Uh, Slash also said when the Guns N' Roses reunion happened, he said there pretty much was always an intention to continue with Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. He said most of the record that uh, him and Miles and the Conspirators wrote was pretty much already written in 2015. He said some riffs weren't written until after the Guns N' Roses reunion. Slash said Living the Dream is a natural progression from the World on Fire record, which came out in 2014. He said the title of the album, Living the Dream, doesn't have anything to do with his personal life, playing stadiums with Guns N' Roses. He said it more has to do with the political climate right now. It's kind of a tongue-in-cheek kind of title. He also said that he always keeps in touch from the, with the guys from the Conspirators, and they even attended some of the Guns N' Roses shows. Slash said it feels like he's got the Guns N' Roses songs out of his system, and he said 90% of the set list on his upcoming tour with Miles Kennedy will focus on Conspirator songs with maybe a few Velvet Revolver, Snake Pit, and, and maybe two Guns N' Roses songs thrown in. I'm guessing it's going to be Paradise City and probably Sweet Child of Mine that they're still going to be playing. He also said that the Slither cover that Guns N' Roses did this past summer in Europe came up early on during Guns N' Roses rehearsals, but it wasn't played until the last leg of the tour. He said he may or may not play Slither with the Conspirators on their upcoming tour. Slash also said he doesn't pay attention to how big the tour has been in terms of dollar amounts they've been bringing in. He also said when Guns N' Roses reunited, he said the first offers were to do stadium-type gigs. Slash said he was excited about the enthusiasm and the insane crowds he's been seeing. He said it was much better received this time around than during the Use Your Illusion tour. He also talked about reconnecting with Axl Rose, and he said that he was basically huge. He said the most surreal moment was at Soundcheck at the Troubadour. He said uh, being in the environment and looking over and seeing Axl and, and Duff was surreal. He said the tour with Guns N' Roses felt fresh and new and it felt very different from the Use Your Illusion tour. He also was very complimentary towards Frank, Richard, and Dizzy. He said they're all great. Slash said one of the most memorable moments on the Not In This Lifetime tour was when they were playing in uh, Florence, Italy, where the crowd seemed like it was going to implode. Slash said it was really intense. And if you guys remember, Axel actually did a rare tweet thanking the crowd in Italy. And uh, it, so that seems like it was one of the best gigs of this last leg of the tour. Slash also said that Axel Rose has been amazing at each and every show, playing three and a half hour long sets. And Slash briefly talked about the Appetite for Destruction reissue. He said the box set finally got a chance to release a lot of the stuff that's been sitting in the vault. He also said it was fun and cathartic. And he also said that the Shadow of Your Love recording was the first song they did with Mike Klink back in the day when they were auditioning him. And Slash said he never thought that version of Shadow of Your Love would come out. He also said that Shadow of Your Love never made Appetite for Destruction because the band evolved out of uh, the first time they started playing it, which was back in 1985. 
He also had some words about Chinese democracy, saying the songs were cool and he tried to make them his own while they were on tour. He also said the songs kick ass on Chinese democracy. Slash also said at one point in time he was a roadie at the whiskey for uh, whoever was basically around and needed help, who needed help. Slash also said he saw a few bands back in the day that started out on the Sunset Strip, including the Knack and Quiet Riot. He briefly talked about how there were no plans beyond 2018 with Guns N' Roses in terms of touring. He also revealed that the conspirators uh, have some touring plans. He said they're going to be doing Europe in early 2019, South America in the spring of 2019 in April. And then he also said there's some summertime shows, but he wouldn't elaborate any more on that. He also talked... Um, a bit about his favorite thing, favorite things to eat on the Rainbow Bar and Grill menu, saying pizza and the Chinese chicken salad. And he also said the chicken soup was good as well. Slash also said the record with the conspirators has been done since May of this year, and he's been dying to release it. So that's basically everything he talked about. Um, it's pretty awesome that GNR Central summarizes all that for you to save you guys some time. But if you guys want to watch or listen to the entire interview, it's up on the link down below. Let's go on to our next news story. So we got some great news because it's a special anniversary today if you guys are Guns N' Roses fans. So today marks the 30th anniversary of when Appetite for Destruction hit the number one spot on the Billboard charts for the first time. So they were out on tour opening for Aerosmith. And uh, yeah, Appetite for Destruction took a while, but it finally hit number one on the Billboard charts. And I just wanted to give a big... Uh, Congratulations to Guns N' Roses. And then speaking of Appetite hitting number one, it's kind of funny, 30 years later, it's still on the Billboard charts. So it, it, the reissue peaked at number 10. It slid uh, quite a few spots since its release, but you guys have to remember, it's really not a new release. There's still a lot of old stuff that fans have already heard for a very long time, but it's still pretty impressive to be on the Billboard charts 30 years later. So this is a news story that really didn't get picked up by a lot of places, but I was able to find it. So they interviewed the lighting director of the Not In This Lifetime tour, and he talked a bit about some of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So um, the guy who was interviewed was named Phil Ely. So Phil's work with the iconic American Hard Rockers dates back over 30 years since they first hit uh, Superstardom with their debut, Appetite for Destruction. So Ron Schilling is out on the road as a lighting director uh, for this one, which is the first time the three original members, Axl Rose, Slash, and Duff McKagan, of course, have performed together since 93. He revealed the style of the set design actually had its roots with the original Use Your Illusion tour, a famous snapshot of rock and roll history from 91 to 93, renowned for many things including being one of the longest rock tours ever. So the GNR band members all felt comfortable with the basic architecture and overall feel of the original set design. So Phil took this as a starting point and brought it up to date with the most recent lighting and visuals including BMFLs and adding video to the set um, to the set as well. So he also revealed that Axl Rose, Slash and Duff all have different management. So Phil's initial challenge back in 2016, including getting all three to agree on a viable aesthetic for the tour. Having the experience of working with them for so long, however, he had a good idea of what they do and don't like. So the tour's universal lighting rig has been adapted for several legs, including the most recent European section, and has a number of permutations in other parts of the world, all in keeping with the same vintage big rock show styling. Ron has been using uh, Robes products for around 10 years and appreciates the consistency and dependability. They also said from an operator's point of view, uh, when he presses the button, and that's approximately 3,500 times each show, which is kind of insane. Each time the lights come on, I think the BMFL's effects look cool, which says a lot. So he also rec uh, recalls his previous experience working with ACDC. So if you guys want to read the entire interview, I've linked to it down below. Let's go into our next news story of the week. So going back to a news story I was talking about earlier, um, Slash has announced that September 11th and 13th they're going to be playing the Whiskey. The 11th show is going to be a private show while the 13th will be a public show. But then his bandmate Todd Currents posted this on social media asking the Whiskey, what about the 12th with a smiley face? So I think it's probably safe to assume we're going to see an announcement of the 12th show probably being another public show. And then finally, uh, one of the biggest re YouTube reaction channels uh, posted a review of the video for Don't Cry. So... Uh, the guy's name is Alex Hefner. He's got probably oh, just over 100,000 subscribers, and uh, he does uh, reactions to different videos. He'd never heard Don't Cry before, so he basically just captured himself reacting to the music video and song. And I know a lot of people like these reaction videos. I posted one about these guys from Vegas who did one to Coma, and they seem to love the song. Go check out his reaction video to Don't Cry. It's, it's always amazed me, like, you know, almost 30 years after the video came out, some people still haven't seen it or heard the song. 
especially considering it gets a lot of radio airplay. So that does it for this week's news, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my new channel. I'm hoping things get worked out with my new channel, with my old channel, so that I can finally go back to it. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one, and make sure you guys got have a great week. Take care.